Hello ladies and gentlemen, Holotide here, and today we're gonna tackle a hot topic, and that is microtransactions. And, you know, they've become commonplace recently, but we're gonna talk about why many gamers, myself included, feel like they're a bad thing, that they come with more cons than pros. Now, I do think there are a couple pros to having microtransactions, you know, like free DLC, things like that, free updates. But with how intrusive they've become in gaming, I think that that's kind of gone out the window. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you for checking out the video. If you agree, make sure you leave a like. It absolutely helps the channel out. And if you feel so inclined, go ahead and sub. I could be your third favorite YouTuber, and I'm trying to hit 15,000 subs by the end of this year, and I would be really grateful. All right, so first off, I was listening to a BBK Dragoon video where he made an offhand comment about an article on Investopedia talking about microtransactions. But the, the comment that he made that really made me think was, and this is from the article, game developers have learned to take advantage of the new revenue source, aka microtransactions. It is estimated that only 5% to 20% of game communities make microtransactions and the amounts spent vary. As little as 5%. And these game companies have learned to like absolutely gouge that part of the player base to just have immense revenue. Also for those who are watching the video and don't quite know what microtransactions are, they're just small payments made within a game for most of the time cosmetic items, maybe extra content. I guess you can throw in things like Halo's credit system, you know, Fortnite bucks, like in-game currency. Now in the beginning, they didn't often feel like they were super predatory. I remember Bethesda back in the day with the horse armor DLC. Also, I'm pretty sure that Bungie had a form of microtransaction where you could have more like theater space or something like that for Halo 3. I remember playing Destiny 1 and they started up the Eververse store and people were like, I don't know if this is gonna be good for the game and now look at Destiny 2. Then you have the mobile gaming side of things where microtransactions mean pay to win. You get significant advantages over people that aren't paying money. I used to play this game I don't remember what it was called, but you basically had these generals and you could have bases and stuff and you were playing against other real people and you would send your army out and they would be led by these generals and they could level up to like certain like level 80, level 90, level 100. And the dudes that had like retirement money and stuff that were just like super rich would absolutely mop the floor with people like me. And that makes you want to spend money so that you can go toe to toe with them or do you just quit the game? So let's talk about how this has affected game design as a whole. I really do feel like gaming and developers and studios have had to go from making art to making just money. I feel like a lot of them are controlled by people in suits now and the bottom line is the most important thing and they just wanna maximize profits, max, 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 maximize that revenue. So they're gonna focus on how can they shove microtransactions into the game instead of maybe making a good game from the get-go. Something with a good narrative, an immersive experience. They're just gonna find ways that drive in-game purchases. And I definitely think recently it feels like games have been more of a cash grab than something that's art. A game that I always think about that kind of bucks at the trend is Elden Ring. I absolutely adore Elden Ring. It's one of my favorite games of all time. There are no microtransactions. I guess if you count the expansion, Shadow of the Erd Tree, maybe, but other than that, man, like you're just going in there and it is, in my opinion, a work of art. And it was so successful, had so many players have, you know, amazing Game of the Year awards, things like that, and made money. And I think it was hopefully a wake up call to a lot of studios that have been solely focused on making as much money up front as they can and the player base falls off, but it doesn't matter because you were able to sell a bunch of cosmetic items. When I mean, they could have a loyal fan base that's going to stick with you. They're gonna buy whatever game you make next and they expect and they expect high quality content. There's also an even darker side to this and that is kind of like an addiction. There have been multiple studies that show 
microtransactions and how like the part of the brain that associates it with like gambling and things like that has made it easy for people, especially younger people, to overspend. It's not about buying one skin, it's about having all the skins or it's like, oh, the next loot box will have the CSGO skin that I want. And it's like, oh, it's only another dollar fifty, only another dollar fifty, only another dollar fifty, and they just spiral out of control. Now, because of that, a lot of countries, and even the United States, has seen this, where they've become an intrusive and a feature that exploits the player base. Epic Games actually finalized a settlement with the FTC to pay customers. $245 million for quote-unquote unwanted in-game purchases. Now in 2023, the global microtransaction market was expected to reach $76 billion in 2023. In 2023, so it's 2024, so last year, and I've tried to see what that actual number was. It's very hard to find, but it's projected by 2027 to be 117 Halo number, billion dollars. That is absolutely insane to me. Now, like I said before, I felt like we were kind of seeing a uprising from gamers and not spending money. And seeing that the amount of people, the 5% to 20% on a game spending money is technically low. I don't know if it's low enough. Personally, I can't tell you how to spend your money. That's something that you work for and earn unless you're stealing your mom's credit card, and you should be able to spend your money how you want. But there's a reason why people say vote with your wallet. If you wanna see change, you have to hit companies where it hurts the most, and that is their wallets. Now, with all this being said, I know this is a super you know, controversial topic. I'm sure if you ask some of these studios and companies that you know, microtransactions has given them the, I'm sure if you ask some of these companies, they'll say that microtransactions have given them the opportunity to do things that they could never do before. But for the average player, I think that it is probably more of a con. The industry is gonna keep evolving and we need as gamers to think about where we're heading. Will we ever see a balance between developers and the player base? Who knows? But as always, I would love to know your opinions down in the comments, so make sure you leave them. I feel like there was a point in time where people just kind of gave up and accepted that this was just how it was going to be forever. And now, not so much. I do feel like there's kind of a change. But that's going to do it for the video, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you all around the ring. Peace!